Meanwhile, the Southern Baptist Church, the nation's largest Protestant denomination, voted to oppose the use of in vitro fertilization. NBC News correspondent Aaron McLaughlin has the details. The eyes have it, and the resolution is adopted. This morning, the nation's largest Protestant denomination voting firmly in favor of a resolution against the current practice of in vitro fertilization. It's the first time the convention representing 13 million Southern Baptists has voted on the issue. Dangers that come from mishandling or um, abusing these kinds of things um, would not be considered ethical by us. Dr. Albert Moeller helped draft the resolution. IVF has been around for decades. Why yeah. now? Well, the catalyst was undoubtedly the decision by the Alabama State Supreme Court. Sometimes there's a catalyst that all of a sudden uh, helps to awaken the Christian conscience on these issues. The resolution, which received about 60 percent of the delegate votes, supporting a decision in February by Alabama's Supreme Court, which ruled embryos are considered children. This resolution affirms that, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Unequivocally. It also calls for members to advocate for the government to restrain actions inconsistent with the dignity and value of every human being, which necessarily includes frozen embryonic human beings. It's not just a statement of sort of moral principle. It's calling on members of these faith communities to lobby the government to restrict IVF. Still, the decision was not unanimous. Some delegates shared stories of lives enriched so by IVF, including Daniel Taylor, who spoke on behalf of his godson's parents who conceived using IVF. I cannot believe we are privileged to have him in our lives. Because of him, I thank God for IVF. Why are you disappointed by this resolution passing? I think that some of the language is a little harsher than I would like. Some of the language implies that there is no use for IVF that is ethical. And whereas I know of circumstances, because my godson was conceived in this circumstance, where IVF was used in a very ethical way that is consistent with pro-life and Christian ethics. Joe, I want to get your take on this your church, um, but also... Is this in the Bible? Is this in the scripture? Is this what, where, where is this coming from that is related to the actual religion involved? Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked about this before. I mean, from the birth of Christ through 1980, Southern Baptist Church was pro-choice. I mean, there was nothing revealed over those, those almost 2,000 years that made the Southern Baptist Church and other mainline Protestant church go pro-life. Uh, they did for political reasons. And again, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can, if you're actually interested in history and if you're actually interested in the facts, you can, you can trace it back, as I've said, to Richard Vigory and um, Jerry Falwell mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and conservative activists deciding that they needed to beat Jimmy Carter, who was a Southern Baptist Democrat, and they were going to use abortion to separate Democrats from, um, from the Southern Baptist Democrat. And so they did. And uh, Paul Weyrich also. I mean, so this was planned. And they said, but we're, we're not only going to make it a political issue, we're going mm -hmm. to make it a religious issue. And so they started a process that 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 now um, got to say makes uh, life uh, much harsher and more frightening for 10 year old rape victims, for victims of incest. And now in this move, I must say, um, families desperate to have families babies. desperate. And I, I we we know about this. My family knows about this personally. Um, families desperate to have babies. I mean, I grew up. This was again, I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. And this is again, I think there's a very extreme view for the convention to take on the whole. Yeah, I, I want I, I will just say if there is such value for life, then I think the Southern Baptist Church should have a very, very harsh, uh, direct statement on the death penalty, um, on war. Uh, if, if they, again, they can do that. I know there are other people of faith who are pacifists, uh, who value 
life to such a degree that they believe that even war is a sin. And I would just say again, as I've said here before, the Bible, the New Testament, the Gospels, the teaching of Jesus Christ should instruct Christians to do what they believe, should instruct on, on, in areas where Jesus was silent, in areas where Jesus didn't talk about, for instance, abortion, which is not, this is the lie that the hard right will tell you. This is a lie. The hard right will tell you that this is a contemporary issue. It is not a contemporary issue. It was an issue uh, in ancient Rome. It was an issue, even Aristotle. Aristotle actually talked about this issue uh, hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, So this was a contemporary issue. It just happened to be an issue that Jesus didn't talk about. And, um, Even the Catholic Church, not to get too deep into this, but this is important. Even the Catholic Church over the centuries uh, went back and forth over, you know, thinking, saying abortion was okay through the quickening. But it was back and forth and back and forth when humans decided how they wanted to interpret the gospel of Jesus Christ. But to claim Jesus is against this and Jesus is against IVF, it's just... That's just, there's no scriptural basis for it. Again, people can use the scriptures to instruct, but please, please leave your self-righteousness like at home and get out of my face with it. (laughs) Because if the Southern Baptist Church was passing resolutions in the 1970s that they were Mm pro-choice, are you telling me that my grandmother's in hell now? Mm -hmm. My mom's in hell now? My dad's in hell now? because they were members, practicing members who went to church four times a week and brought us to church four times a week. Uh, Because everybody before 1980, when Richard Vigory Mm. and Paul Weirich and Jerry Falwell cynically decided to use this as a political issue that somehow those Southern Baptists are lost, it's a lie. It's a lie that's been spread over our lifetimes. And I'm not here saying that the, the church, the churches don't have the right to be pro-life or even to be against IVF, but don't hide behind the gospel of Jesus Christ to do it. Mm. You can say, I've read this, I've read the scriptures and I've been instructed by it. And this is, this is on my heart. Just like people who are pacifists who don't go to war, right. just like uh, Catholics who have been against the death penalty, uh, Catholic priests have been against the death penalty for quite some time. So I mean, it's it's very selective here. It is, and it's, it's driven, judgmental. It's which, very selective. It's very judgmental, and it's very driven by politics. So I will just, say, you keep and, and again, to yourself. let me say, I'm talking mainly about Protestants here, because yeah. I will say, Catholics, for a much longer time, have seen abortion as a central tenet in their faith. Yeah. Uh, this, though, this is like I said, you know. Protestants just figured out that abortion was a sin, not after the Beatles broke up, but after the Eagles broke up. That's how hilarious it is that they're now putting this as a central tenant of their faith. Instead of just saying, we've read the scriptures and this this is something that's on our hearts. And we we feel this way, but we're not going to judge you and say you're going to hell because you're taking the position that we took for hundreds of years.